allegations of shackled students and gang rape inside China's detention camps. Hong Kong CNN. On the first day of her new teaching job at a Chinese government-run detention center in Xinjiang, Kerbino Sidik said she saw two soldiers carry a young Uyghur woman out of the building on a stature. There was no spark of life in her face. Her cheeks are drained of color. She was not pretty, said Shtick, a former elementary school teacher who says who says she was forced to spend several months teaching at two detention centers in Xinjiang in 2017. A police woman who worked at the camp later told her the woman had died from heavy bleeding. Heavy bleeding. Though she didn't say what caused it. It was the first of many stories the police woman would tell Stick during the teacher's three month assignment at the heavily fortified building that housed the female deten detainees. According to Siddiq, the police woman claims to have been assigned to uh, investigate the report of rape at the center by her superiors, though CNN has no evidence of that claim. However, Siddiq said sh sh what she heard and saw herself was so dis disturbing that it made her ill. Siddiq's allegations are similar to those of former detainees who have spoken of rape and systemic systematic sexual assault within China's best detention, best detention network. Her testimony is a real account of a worker's direct experience of life inside the detention centers, where the U.S. government alleges China is committing genocide against the Uyghurs and other Muslim mo minorities though through a repressive campaign of mass detention, torture, forced birth control, and abortions. Chinese government has rejected allegations of genocide and in a statement to CNN said there is no so-called sy systematic sexual assault and abuse, abuse against women in Xinjiang. However, Siddiq said the female police office officer described how her male colleagues used to boost about it. When male guards were drinking at night, the policemen would tell each other how they raped and tortured girls. Shidik told CNN from her new home in the Netherlands. Shidik went from being an elementary school teacher to someone forced to teach in Mandarin, Mandarin to detention detainees. Inside the camp, an ethnic, ethnic Uzbek, Siddiq grew up in Xinjiang and spent 28 years teaching elementary school students aged from 6 to 13. In September 2016, she said she was summoned to a meeting at the Saibag District Borough of Education and told she would be working with illiterate. In March 2017, she met her new students, about 100 men and a handful of women. They came in, their feet and hands chained in sh shackles, she said. At her first lesson, Shidik said she turned to the 
chalkboard only to her here the detainees behind her crying i turned slightly i saw their tears falling down her bowl beard the female detainees were crying loudly she said young detainees who arrived at the center's fit robot and bright eyed quickly sickened and weakened weakened she said from her classroom in the basement of one camp Siddiq said she could hear screams. When she asked about their cries, she claims a male policeman told her that the detainees were being tortured. During the time I was teaching in there, I witnessed a horrific tragedy, Siddiq said. CNN has no way of verifying Siddiq's account from inside the detention centers. However, former Xinjiang detainees have told CNN they were subjected to political indoctrination and abuse and Uyghurs who now live abroad have described their relatives disappearing into detention. Leaked document provided to CNN show the Uyghurs could be sent to the camps for as little as having a beard or wearing a veil. The Chinese government has claimed the camps are bo vocational, vocational training centers, part of the official st strategy to both the stamp out violent Islamist extremism and a great job. There is no rounding of thousand, thousands of Uyghurs Muslims, says, said Xu Jing Jiang, a spokesperson for the Communist Party Publicity Department in Xinjiang, at a government press conference on February 1st. What we have cracked down on, according to the law, are a few heinous and uh, obstinate leaders and the backbones of extremism, extremist groups. What we have rescued are those who have been infected with uh, religious extremism and uh, committed minor crimes. Then I was gang raped. Thursday, Jia Wudun said she had committed no crime when she was first detained in February 2017. After returning home to Xinjiang's Xinyun County to obtain official documents, she and her husband had been living for five years in neighboring Kazakhstan. Her husband, Harmirza Halik, an ethnic Kazakh, was not detained and tracked her down to the Xinyuin County Vocational School. She spoke through the iron gate of the school, said Halik, speaking by phone with CNN from Kazakhstan. She cried after seeing me. I told her, don't be afraid. You have not broken the law and there is nothing to worry about. Speaking to CNN from the US, Thursday Jia Udun said, said that she was taken to, to a cell with about 20 other women where they were given little food and water. The authorities released Jia Wudun after a month in detention, but then summoned her back to the camp in March 2018, which she claimed marked 
the beginning of the nine month nightmare. Speaking to CNN from the US, Jia Wu Jun said that she was taken to a cell with about 20 other woman, women where they were given little food and water and only allowed to use the toilet once a day for three to five minutes. Those who took more times were electrocuted with shock batons, she said. During her detention, Jia Uju says girls interrogated her about her years in Kazakhstan, asking whether she had ties to Uyghur exile groups. During one of these sessions, she claims the police officers kicked and beat her till she passed out another time, while, on, while still bruised from her beating. Jia Udun claimed two female girls took her to another room where they lied her on a table. They inserted a stone baton inside me and twist, twisted and shocked me with it. I blacked out, she said. Ten days later, she said a group of male girls took her away from her shell. shell. In the next room, I heard another girl crying and screaming. I saw about five or six men going into that room. I saw they were torture her, torturing her. But then I was gang raped. After that, I realized what they also did to her, Jia Wudun said, through, her, through tears. She said it happened multiple times while she was detained in the camps. They were extremely sadistic, causing pain and damage to the body by beating and smacking my head on the wall. It was their way of punishing us. Jia Ujun's allegations of rape and torture were first reported by the C BBC, CN BBC. CNN is on, uh, on a babe on a bail, bail to CNN is on on a bail to independently verify Jia Wudun's claims, but they were they are similar to accounts from Gurbak Gurbakhar Jari Lopa, an ethnic Uyghur from Kazakhstan. Speaking to CNN in July 2020, Jalilova describes being locked in a prison-like room with about 20 other women after she was detained in May 2017. Jalilova said she confronted one guard who sexually assaulted her. I told I told him, "Aren't you ashamed? Don't you have a mother, a sister? How can you do this to me like that?" He hit me with the electronic shock prod and said, "You don't look like a woman, human." She she said. On the night of September 26, 2019, after being warned by Chinese authorities not to speak of her experience in detention, Jia Wudun said she walked across the Kazakhstan border to her waiting husband. But in the days that followed, Jia Wudun's health deteriorated and she suffered vaginal bleeding. In 2020, Jia Wudun was rushed to the U.S. for medical treatment. Shortly after her arrival, doctors surgically removed her uterus, with the medical records seen by CNN showing she was diagnosed 
from pelvic abscess and the virginal bleeding as well as tuberculosis tuberculosis she said she blamed her medical complications on her treatment in the Xinjiang camps although CNN cannot verify this conclusion after she got out she didn't tell me anything about her experience in the camp Halik says sometimes she would cry at night and I was very angry I knew that these things she experienced were not good but I didn't dare to ask Jia Udu now lives in the U.S. after being rushed there for medical treatment for problems she said were related to her detention. Deniers and shame In the statement to CNN, the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs did not address the allegations made by the three women directly but instead issued a broad denier. We hope that the relevant media can distinguish right from wrong, not be deceived and misread, misread by first news and BS report. The foreign ministry said, adding that their training centers protect the basic rights of trainees including woman, women woman, from being violated and it is strictly forbidden to insert and ob abuse trainees in any way. The Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous, Autonomous Region Administration has not responded to requests for comment. In a new conference on February 3rd, Chinese officials introduced some ethnic minority women who they said had graduated from the system and shared how they got rid of extreme thought. They also said reports of mass rape and forces sterilization were sheer nonsense and the state States media has sought to personally discredit the woman's claims. For example, in an article published on February 10th, the Global Times accused uh, Guba, Gubakhar Jalinopa of being an actor, and the Thursday Jiaudun's of lying about her forced sterilization quoting a senior official saying that all her family members know that she is inherently 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 inferior Jiaudun told the CNN she had a forced IUD insertion not sterilization Jia Udun said she had no reason to make of her allegations. I am a woman in my 40s. Do you think this is something I can be proud of sharing with the world? She said. I would tell them I'm not afraid of them anymore because they already killed my soul. For, my for her part, Siddiq, the teacher, said she was told by her husband that government officials had come to his house and coached him for four hours about how to film a short video denying his wife's claims of being a detention center. She said her husband told her to never come back to Xinjiang. He blocked me again on WeChat. I don't know, is he alive or dead now? She said. Anwar Ardem and Ar Arslan Kakiriev 
contribute to this report.